Hello, Dr. Greg here uh, again with sort of wrapping up our fear series, fear, frustration, anger, and uh, where it comes from, how you can deal with it, and stuff like that. So I just want to review that fear starts your perception in your frontal lobe, which then goes to the amygdala, which then increases what's called stress hormones, which then affects that part of the brain that gets your heart rate going, your um, you know, your muscles all pumped up and your aggravation. And what happens then is that when you increase these um, stress hormones, cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine stuff, it actually suppresses frontal lobe activity and actually kills frontal lobe nerves, which makes it harder for the individual to reason. The whole goal behind this for when we were um, in, when we were cavemen or whatever, it was to get out of trouble. And that's what that is designed to do. It's not supposed to make you reason, it's supposed to get sort of the heck out of Dodge, right? All right, so what we wanna do is, because we're bombarded with bad information all the time or stressful situations all the time, this system gets overworked and we find we have high blood pressure, you know, bad digestion, diabetes, all that nasty stuff, and we're agitated all the time, we're angry all the time, we're quick-tempered. We want to try and circumvent that because our brains are not designed to be in that state all the time. So just reviewing, um, I gave you sort of six um, techniques or ideas to do to sort of help you deal with this fear, anxiety, frustration, and then eventually anger um, circuit that happens to our brains in the modern day world. Um, one of them is just to sort of be aware <clears throat> of how you feel in certain situations. So, example, if the doorbell rings and you get sort of agitated, um, or if you're watching a news program and you get agitated, those are signs that that is going to spike up your, uh, your stress system and get that amygdala going, which will suppress all reason, uh, and you're going to get angry and frustrated. The other thing is to use your imagination when you're in a situation that you can't change. So in other words, if you're in a news, you're watching news that's really horrible and you get stressed, turn it off and think of something good. Or if the doorbell rings and it always stresses you out, think of it might be someone you haven't seen in a long time and you want to see. Just sort of use your brain to sort of turn things around, reframe things a little bit. The other one is to use your breath. Now, what happens when you get agitated and angry or fearful, your breath shortens. So what you wanna do is you wanna sort of make your nervous system kind of slow down a little bit. That means breathe in and breathe out slowly. Um, and you wanna breathe out slower than you breathe in. It's just sort of trying to turn things off a little bit. Uh, it's sort of a trick you wanna do to your brain to turn things off. The other thing is you want to be um, be aware of your situation. So in other words, if you um, have these uh, situations that you're in, you want to try to avoid them. Uh, just being aware of how you're feeling um, and what's going on and not necessarily making a decision about anything, just be aware of it. So in other words, if you get fearful and then angry, don't act on an angry, just be aware of how you feel being angry. Uh, and let time pass. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is uh, using your brain, and we talked about exciting the frontal lobe when you're irritated. So that could be simply as counting backwards from 100 by sevens or fours or any kind of odd number will make it more difficult. You'll have to think about the number, and that will get your frontal lobe working, which will suppress that amygdala norepinephrine, cortisol, hormone, stress hormone from blowing up. So you wanna circumvent the stress. And the final thing I talked about is just going for a walk, looking at trees, looking at nature, being outside is very pleasing because the frontal lobe likes that and you're stimulating the frontal lobe, which what happens when you stimulate the frontal lobe, you suppress that amygdala, that stress response. And here's the fundamental thing about brain and brain theory. Brain will give you uh, one thing or another thing. And when you say the brain gives you A, it'll suppress B. If it gives you B, it'll suppress A. It's because the brain only has so many um, things it can deal with at one time and it's a very 
uh, I would say, sort of a binary kind of structure in that you get one thing, it's going to suppress another thing. You get one other thing, it's going to suppress another thing. So what you want to do is you want to influence the parts of the brain that get crazy because of fear with things that will calm it down. And usually frontal lobe activity will do that. That's walking, counting numbers backwards, breathing, um, and just being aware of things, just being aware of how you are activates your frontal lobe, right? All those things will quiet down that stress, quiet down those stress hormones, and give you a chance to sort of reason things out and maybe not be so fearful or angry. So in the future, what I'm going to talk about, this, if you, if you understand where I'm going, you see a lot of stuff is brainstem and higher brain frontal lobe stuff. I am on a mission for people to understand what the brainstem does. So the brainstem is very important for allowing us to be human. It needs to function normally so we can be human. And how it functions normally is by simply not sitting for long periods of time, not eating garbage, not getting stressed out all the time, not succumbing to the society that we have um, and all the people that are yelling at you saying, you need to think this way, you need to do this, you need to do that. All that creates fear and anxiety. And what I think that does is it actually suppresses the proper functioning of the brainstem. Now, I'm going to talk about other things that are related to brainstem activity, and we're going to tie it all together. Um, and so look for more videos in the future. They're coming quite quick. We're going to talk about walking. We're going to talk about mucosal membranes, all that kind of stuff, and how it relates to the nervous system and the brain. So this is Dr. Greg, changing the way we look at health.